Hey everyone, it's Denise Brown. Thanks so much for being with me. I am going to introduce you to presenters of the Caring Conference over the next few weeks. Our conference will be will take place March 25th, and we're focused in on our treasure transformations. That's our theme. And I'm thrilled and del delighted to introduce you to Debbie Compton, who's one of our presenters. Hi, Debbie. Hi, how are you? Good, Debbie, you're the author of Caregiving, How to Hold On While Letting Go, which actually has a theme of transformation within the book and your caregiving experience. I'm curious, how would you describe transformation in your life? Uh, thank you, Denise. I'm thrilled to be here. Uh, exactly. They, it, it was a dramatic transformation in a couple of different ways in my life because I was in business, leading a nationwide team, traveling coast to coast, just everything was going great. And then uh, my mother-in-law developed Alzheimer's, um, my dad developed Parkinson's, and my mom already had vascular dementia. And suddenly they all got worse at once. And so being on the coast and having your dad take your mom's pills and almost go comatose and being on the other coast and having um, mom pass out and need to be rushed to the hospital. And then being in Colorado when your mother-in-law locks herself out of her house in the snow, things have to change. Something has to change. So my life totally transformed. I went from working this full-time job leading teams to taking care of three mentally impaired precious parents. So that was the first dramatic transformation. And you're using that transformation to inspire your workshop during our conference. And I love the title of your workshop, which is Problem Solving from Briefcase to Bedside. So tell us how you were able to actually transform that experience into a 25 minute workshop. Well, um, it didn't start out as my plan. It was never my goal to be a full-time caregiver, um, but God has different plans for our lives. And so he used the skills that I learned in business. I, in, in leading teams, you have to learn problem solving skills and you're always solving issues. And so those steps that I learned, uh, I then took and applied to caregiving. Because when you're caring for someone, uh, especially if they have some form of dementia, their ability to communicate gets less and less. So your ability to understand, figure out, decipher what's really going on has to become greater. And so that's what I did. I took my business knowledge and applied it to caregiving because I was completely unprepared for caregiving. And it turns out that I was more prepared but I just didn't realize it. So that's what I want to share with people. You know more than you think you know. Oh, and absolutely. I just, right. Help you use that knowledge to make your life simpler and easier and less stressful. You actually were an attendee at our conference this past November. So tell us why after attending our conference, you wanted to present at the next conference. Well, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I learned so much and we, I, we never fully arrive. We're always learning and growing and shared knowledge, I think is the best knowledge because the things that your presenters share, I could relate to them because like myself, you're sharing from life experience and you're sharing from things, you know, not a textbook, not, you can go online and read, which was the issue that I ran into when I started caregiving. I could go online and find steps and stages of the, of the diseases. But what I needed to know was how do I deal with it? How can I handle this? And how can I stop it from happening again, or at least reduce the odds? And so that's what I teach is, is exactly those steps because you need the how-to, not the theory. Well, theory is good, but you know... <laughs> So tell us about your life today. What's a current transformation that's happening for you? Well, now uh, my dad has passed away from the Parkinson's. My mother-in-law has passed away from Alzheimer's. And my mom, who was the first one who was diagnosed, is still going strong. She has had vascular dementia for over 20 years. And so a lot of people will say, you know, well, how long how long can I expect to live after a diagnosis? I don't know. You know, we, we don't know. People are different. We're individuals. And um, 
so so you can't you can't really tell that but the transformations too and and sorry because I skipped a piece on your when I attended your conference one of the things that I was so impressed with and I have to say this really quickly was you had a presenter that didn't show up and you were doing a live event and here was someone who didn't show up and I was so impressed with the way that you pivoted and just said okay we're going to have a panel discussion and it's going to be boom 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 and I thought that's a woman like me I like that <laughs> I can relate to that because you have to deal with what comes our way and that's what we do as as caregivers particularly um life is changing all the time and you have to be able to adapt and you have to be able to transform into this new reality which is where i am with my mom currently my mom is in latter stages of vascular dementia she um most of the time knows who i am sometimes does not and that's heartbreaking it's it's hard to deal with and it's it's especially hard for me because i teach people it's the disease. It's not your mother. Your mother still loves you. I teach all that stuff, but that stuff is all up here. And down here it says, but this is my mom, you know, so, so it's different. So you really have to transform your thinking to stop worrying about what we don't have and stop focusing on what they can't do and focus on what they can do. And thank God for what we can do now. And we can enjoy ice cream together and we can sit outside in the sunshine and enjoy the day. So it's all about transforming your mind to live in the now. Don't live in regret or you're wasting today. So in essence, transformation is a part of our daily life. And yes. our theme is our treasure transformations. And I wonder what's a treasure that you've received from the transformations that you've experienced? Well, one of the, uh, one of the treasured moments for me was in caring for my mother-in-law with Alzheimer's. Uh, she was in last stages. She could no longer communicate and uh, she hadn't been able to for a while. And so I was at the stage where I am feeding her and, you know, giving her drinks and taking care of all of her daily life for her here in our home. And um, one day I was helping her and I was putting on her shoes and then I stood up and she just, she looked me straight in the eye and she said, thank you so much. And it was clear as a bell from a woman who hadn't spoken in weeks and couldn't be able to speak. And it's just, oh, you know, that, that is a treasure, treasured moment for me right there in that. And there, there've been so many and they're with us. We just have to look for them and, and recognize it and appreciate it because one day that thing that aggravates you, you'll be wishing you had that back again. So that's the, that's the sad reality of dementia. So look for the positive. So what's a transformation that you're experiencing outside of caregiving? Oh, that's hard. Cause it kind of becomes your world. <laughs> um, well, outside, outside of caregiving, uh, I have a full uh, life too, believe it or not. I have six little grandchildren that I just adore and a lot of church activities and things going on as well. And so I think that um, for me, I'm a Christian. And so God is continually transforming my mind and my thoughts. And I'm learning that if you get sad and if you dwell on all the negativity, it brings you down. And so, uh, and the Bible tells us to continually renew our minds. So as long as we're being thankful, even if someone is not a Christian, something that they can do is just write down on a piece of paper, things that they're grateful for, things that they're thankful for. And when you're having a really bad day, go back and read that and look at that and it will help brighten your mood and it'll help encourage you because if you're looking for negative, you'll find it. If you're looking for positive, you'll find it. So the key to me is look for the positive and, and transform your mind so that you can accept it is what it is. This is, this is what we have to deal. We can't change it. We can't, we can't wish it away. This is, this is our life. So let's find a way to make the most of it right now. And I think part of what happens when we're going through a difficult time is that there's a process and we can think of that as a transformation as well. We have to process what's difficult for us in our life. If we yes. don't, 
if we resist it, if we deny it, it persists. I have a friend, Ellen Rogan, who regularly reminds me what you resist persists. So the idea yes. of a transformation just could be a transformation from moment to moment. This idea yes. that I have a broken heart, I have a worried soul, whatever it might be that we're struggling with, it's mm -hmm. not about a lack of insight into the pain. It's right. an acknowledgement that we have pain in our life. And what we're looking to do is find a way to transform that pain. And that's one that, um, as you mentioned that also, I, I recently had to put my mom in a memory care unit and that just killed me. It was so difficult because my dad passed away at home. My mother-in-law passed away here in my home. And then here's my mom that I had to put in a memory care facility and it just broke my heart. Um, but she was passing out, having blood pressure issues and things. And, and I, she was heavier than me at the time too. And so I would kind of get my shoulder under her and we'd both go to the floor. And um, the doctor just said, you can't do this anymore. And it broke my heart. And I had a very hard time transforming from that and transitioning through that to the acceptance and, and finally to the realization that this is what's best for her because she's very social. She loves being around people. She makes no sense, <laughs> but she's happy and she talks and chitter chats and, you know, they can do a shorter shift and then go home. Whereas when they're in my home, there's no break. And as, as caregivers know that it's 24 seven and uh, you can get daily living centers and different things like that. But mom had regressed beyond the ability to be able to do that. So you have to there again, just transform your thinking and, and understand that this is where we are and this is what's best for this situation. So I think that kind of helps too, because um, having dealt with, you know, my mother-in-law's Alzheimer's has its own particular set of issues, um, which cause a lot of anger, mood swings, outbursts. My dad with Parkinson's had um, a lot of hallucinations and delusions and saw aliens digging holes and coming up into his house and things. And uh, mom hasn't, mom doesn't have any of those with vascular dementia, but she just was in a continual loop. And then now, you know, just doesn't even make sense at all. So there's a wide variety, which has helped me in my book um, also because I have three siblings. And so we handle things differently. We're very close. There's only five years from in age between the oldest one and the youngest one and two girls in between. <laughs> so it's two boys and two girls, but we all handle the situations differently. And so that's part of what I included in my book as well, because you can develop a plan and it might work perfectly for today, but then this afternoon or tomorrow, it may not work at all. And so you have to have a new plan and you have to come up with another idea and another thing to try. And I think that can be the most challenging thing for caregivers and for uh, workers in care facilities, because what worked yesterday may not work today. So you're, you got to be continually trying new things and learning new things. And, and again, transforming your thoughts to, I can't be stuck in a rut. I have to evolve as well. I also think it's important to note that our role transforms within our, our lifespan. So who we are has transformed from our, our life in our early 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, and beyond. And the idea that we don't stay the same, even if we want life to stay the same, <laughs> yeah. is part of what we treasure about a transformation that every day we can get up and decide, I'm going to be better about this part of my life, this part of my well-being, this part of my communication, this part of my relationships. It's this yes. idea that we give ourselves a chance every day if right. we look at there's transformation possible within every day. I agree. And I think that caregivers, uh, at least I know I do, I put tremendous pressure on myself. I require more of myself than others do. And I think caregivers need to give themselves a little bit of a break. You know, I, uh, I took my mother to the eye doctor and we're sitting in the waiting for our appointment to come sitting in the lobby. And I realized she has on one black shoe and one Brown. I about died. <laughs> I was like, Oh my goodness, how could I have done this? And I'm starting to feel like this is horrible. This is awful. And then I had to check myself and go, wait a second. We made it. 
we're on time. She's fed and healthy, you know, happy. It's okay. Who cares? And, and that's a lot of it is just saying, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. It's okay. Give yourself a break. You're doing a hard job. We can transform our own self-judgment into acceptance because we do have a tendency to be our harsh, harshest critics. Yes. And that is an energy drainer. Yes, absolutely. So Debbie, for our listeners who would like to be in touch with you, what's your website or how can they be in touch with you? Sure. My website is thepurplevine.com. And uh, on it, you'll find articles and information, um, different ways to get in touch with me, join my newsletter, um, you know, uh, look, all, all sorts of things. So they can reach out through that. Or if um, they have a direct issue or something, they can get in contact with me there too, through the purplevine.com. Okay. And Debbie will be presenting at the Caring Conference on March 25th. And I just want to mention that we are an inclusive conference, which means whatever you believe, whatever is important to you, you are welcome to join us. We like to share our personal stories and we are welcoming of all stories. So you can go to caringourway.com to learn more about our conference, during which we're going to talk about our treasure transformations. Thanks, Debbie. I'll see you on March 25th. Thank you. Thanks everybody for watching. Bye-bye. Bye.